In this video, we're going to see high pass RC circuits, time response for a square wave input. I've shown the high pass RC circuit here and its square wave input. Well, let's assume this is t is equal to 0 and this is the time period of this periodic square waveform, which is t naught. And this point, let it be t naught by 2 so that the duty cycle is 50%. And the maximum value of the input is Vm. The pulse width here is T0 by 2. Now let's assume that the capacitor is completely discharged and it has no charge when we are starting at t equal to 0. Now looking at the input right at t equal to 0, suddenly a voltage of Vm is applied across the circuit. Now we know the capacitor cannot allow instantaneous changes of voltage across it. Which means immediately at t equal to 0, the voltage across the capacitor will be 0. Which means the voltage across the resistor will be is equal to Vm. So hence the output voltage at t equal to 0 will be Vm. So let me represent that here that output voltage I am taking in blue color will be Vm at t equal to 0. Now as time increases, as we are still holding the input voltage at Vm, obviously the capacitor would charge through the resistor and the voltage across the capacitor will keep increasing, which means the voltage across the resistor would decrease. Now in order to plot the output waveform, we need to know the rate at which the capacitor charges so that we know the rate at which the output voltage would decrease. Hence, similar to what we have discussed in low pass RC circuit, we will take two cases here. Number one, when RC is very, very high compared to the pulse width T0 by 2. And the second case where RC is very, very small compared to the pulse width T0 by 2. Now let's investigate the first case where RC is very, very greater than T0 by 2. In this case, we have in terms of time when T is in between 0 and T0 by 2, we have already seen in even low pass RC circuit that the voltage across the capacitor will be equal to Vm times 1 minus e power minus T over RC. And obviously the input voltage is equal to Vc plus Vr. We can write Vr is equal to Vm times e power minus t over Rc. Now as we have already assumed that Rc is very very greater than T0 by 2, which means T0 by 2 over Rc will be very very small compared to 1. And here in this range where t is less than T0 by 2, obviously T by Rc will be even smaller and of course we can take it as very small compared to 1. Then we can write this equation, the voltage across the resistor as Vm times 1 minus T over Rc, which means the output voltage is going to decrease linearly with time. Now I'm going to represent the output voltage change on top of this input voltage waveform. It decreases linearly and hits a point here at T is equal to T0 by 2. Now we know what will that voltage be that will be equal to V0 at T is equal to T0 by 2 will be Vm times 1 minus T0 by 2 Rc which is Vm minus T0 by 2 Rc times Vm which means the drop in the voltage is this much which means this delta V0 will be equal to T0 by 2 RC in fact which is also the voltage across the capacitor because if you take this is the voltage across the resistor at T equal to T0 by 2 which means that delta V0 is the voltage across the capacitor so this is also equal to voltage across capacitor at T is equal to T0 by 2 now once we move into the second case that is when t is in between t 
t naught by 2 and t naught. We know the voltages across the resistor and capacitor right at t is equal to t naught by 2. Now immediately after t naught by 2 the voltage applied across the circuit is 0 which means the input is shorted. In that case the voltage across the capacitor is delta v naught that voltage will reduce because the capacitor will discharge through the resistor. But at least at t naught by 2 plus immediately after t naught by 2 the voltage across the capacitor is not going to change. So let me draw the circuit here that immediately after t naught by 2 the circuit the voltage across the capacitor will be delta v naught as we take the input is 0 we short this one for our understanding. Now obviously the capacitor won't allow the voltage across it to change instantaneously hence at t is equal to t naught by 2 plus the voltage across the capacitor would still be delta v naught. Now the voltage across the resistor would be minus delta v naught. So this will be minus delta v naught that will be our output voltage right at t is equal to t naught by 2 plus. So hence we can show the output waveform here. Let me take off this t naught by 2 and put it over here. Now the output voltage immediately after t naught by 2 will be delta v naught. So let me represent that here this will be delta v naught. Now as time progresses the capacitor would discharge through the resistor. So hence the voltage it will increase and in fact it will become zero by the time we hit the next period. Now similarly we can draw the waveform for the next cycles which will be like this and for the next half like this. This waveform will be the output voltage waveform of the high pass RC circuit. But this is all under the assumption that RC is very very greater than T naught by 2. And of course I have missed this point which is delta V naught is T naught by 2 RC times Vm which we have seen here. Now we can make a note here that delta V naught over Vm which is equal to T naught by 2 RC. Obviously we already know that T naught by 2 RC is very very small compared to 1. And in fact we call the delta V naught as the tilt in the output voltage waveform compared to input voltage waveform. If you look at the first half cycle of the wave where the input voltage is Vm, that waveform looks like it has tilted at the output with a delta V naught in that given pulse width. So we are going to call this delta V naught as the tilt. Now we can have tilt percentage defined which will be equal to delta V naught over Vm times 100% which is equal to T naught by 2 RC times 100%. And of course this can be written in terms of the lower cutoff frequency for the high pass RC circuit where we know that FL is equal to 1 over 2 pi RC. Now we have RC here where RC can be written as 1 over 2 pi FL. And we have this time period T naught where we can say the input frequency F naught is equal to 1 over T naught. So taking this RC value and F0 value we can write the tilt percentage as pi FL over F0 times 100%. So tilt percentage is an important parameter in this consideration. Now let us look at the second case. RC is very very small compared to the pulse width T0 by 2. Now I have shown here the input voltage waveform which is a square wave of pulse width T0 by 2 and a period of T0. We know irrespective of the condition that we take for RC and the pulse width, right after T equal to 0 plus immediately the voltage across the capacitor is not going to change. Hence the voltage across the resistor is going to be the input voltage itself which is Vm. But now 
how the discharge happens will depend on the assumption that we have made here which is rc is very very small compared to t naught by 2 which means the discharge is going to be which means the charging of the capacitor is going to be fast so hence the capacitor would get fully charged before we hit t naught by 2 which means the charging rate cannot be taken linear anymore now because in this assumption the capacitor is going to be completely charged we know the capacitor voltage is given by the equation v n times 1 minus e power minus t over rc which means the capacitor would attain a maximum value of vm which means the resistor across voltage by the time we hit t equal to t naught by 2 will be zero so hence the voltage across the resistor would decrease exponentially and we would get a waveform like this and by the time we hit t naught by 2 the voltage across the resistor would be zero so let me write here at t is equal to t naught by 2 voltage across resistor is zero but voltage across capacitor is vm but we know the circuit when t is equal to t naught by 2 plus the input is shorted and the capacitor is fully charged to vm now the voltage across the resistor will be equal to minus vm so to start with at t is equal to t naught by 2 plus this is for t naught by 2 plus v naught will be equal to minus vm so hence the output voltage right after t naught by 2 will be minus vm and then as time progresses beyond the t naught by 2 the capacitor would discharge through the resistor and obviously it will be exponential in nature because of the assumption we made that rc is very very small compared to t naught by 2 hence the output waveform would be like this we can show it for the rest of the time with respect to the input waveform now this blue waveform is corresponding to the output voltage that we see across the resistor now if you observe the output voltage waveform is like spikes or to say the imperfect impulses and of course practically we cannot have a perfect impulse generated so hence we can say that if you make sure that rc is very very small compared to the pulse with t naught by 2 this circuit is going to work like a differentiator because when we take a square wave and differentiate right where the slope is present we're going to have a impulse if the slope is positive in fact at this point the slope is positive so we're going to have a positive impulse at this point the slope is negative we'll have a negative impulse if we differentiate and so on so forth positive impulse here a negative impulse here a positive impulse and so on French, we can say if RC is very very small compared to T naught by 2 which is the pulse width high pass RC circuit converts a square wave into spikes or impulses so hence the circuit behaves as a differentiator if you like the video please give a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe and thank you for watching